what are we doing tonight? We are looking at consomme, the king of soups, the king of broths, whatever you want to call it, okay? Tonight, what I'm going to do is I'm going to take a really, really, let's just show you here, a really, really muddy looking stock. I mean, look at that. I tried to make it just just utterly disgusting looking, okay? I don't even want to tell you what that reminds me of, okay? I'm going to take this really, really ugly stock and I'm going to turn it into a pristine, crystal clear jewel of a broth, okay? And, and I'm going to take you along for the ride, okay? What I want to do is, is get this thing put together and on the stove and while it's kind of coming up on the stove, then I want to kind of talk a little bit more about, you know, going into depth on this thing okay and so looks like uh hey hey looks like we got a couple of people out there good to see you there nate mikey b's watching thanks for showing up guys hey it's either this or i start a ukulele band and i don't think anybody wants that okay and so uh we are gonna get going here okay ladies and gentlemen before i start let me do a little station identification i am dave nelson i am your charming host in the indie indie cooks community on Facebook, and I'm going to have a little sip of something here to get started. Mm, delicious. Now, we are streaming in the Indie Cooks community on Facebook, and there's all sorts of great people there, and they're, they're posting what they do in the kitchen, their kitchen culinary adventures, what have you, okay? It's a great little site, but it gives me a platform to put out kitchen lessons, cooking stuff, talk about food, and bring in some interesting other food people, interesting other food people to go ahead and discuss as well, okay? And so uh, that's kind of what that's there for. Um, if you enjoy this sort of thing, if you're the type of person who who enjoys this sort of thing, please uh, look into the uh, Indie Cooks channel on YouTube, where I have dozens and dozens and, and dozens upon dozens of videos cooking videos or exclusive hard hitting in depth between two stove interviews with fascinating food folk that also get into food and, and talk about food okay why did i start this because people can't even cook their way out of a paper bag okay and so that's what we're talking about tonight so without any further ado i think i have station identified identified the station and we're going to move into this okay so let's take a look at the ingredients we're going to be uh, uh getting into tonight i am going to do a little scene change here come on over this way and i'm just going to start laying stuff on my board okay so you saw my stock okay the the mission tonight if we choose to accept it is to clarify this stock but we're also going to be fortifying this stock so it just tastes the bomb okay consomme again it's it's a jewel in the crown of culinary if you will all right and so it's just going to be very rich flavorful and super super clear and there's a little technique here it's easy to mess it up but it's also not hard to do okay and so that's going to be the goal here so we're going to start with a very flavorful stock but it's it's going to be an ugly one and you don't have to have an ugly one to start with but I do. This is my stock. There are many like it, but this one is mine. Now, other things that we're going to bring into the mix here, we're going to bump up the flavor of this stock. So I'm going to bring in some aromatics and I'm, I'm showing you my standard aromatic combination here of onions, celery, there's celery in there and carrots as well. Okay. This is something that the initiated amongst you is going to refer to as mirepoix you will know what i'm talking about so those three vegetables together are going to be mirepoix we're going to be working a little mirepoix into this this is basic basic french soul food here when you're talking about mirepoix okay other things that are going to be coming along for the ride well i got a pepper grinder here and i'm going to bust out a couple of peppercorns out of there throw them into the mix okay why not really really common stuff you've seen in a ton of these conversations right Beautiful thyme straight out of the garden. I've got a few bay leaves, right? Again, classic combination of flavors, mirepoix, thyme, bay leaf. Uh, I've also got some herb stems. I was working at, you know, the day job today and I was cleaning parsley and, uh, you know, my secret ingredient, I was cleaning cilantro too. And I saved those stems and I'm going to throw those in the pot. Why am I using stems instead of herbs? Because herbs tend to have a lot of chlorophyll in them. And so if I'm throwing chlorophyll into this beautiful crystal clear stock, 
it's going to turn green, right? And I don't want a green stock. I want a beautiful uh, amber colored liquid, okay? And so I use the stems. The stems give me that flavor without giving me that chlorophyll, okay? So I'm going to move all this off the board. We're going down on the ingredients here. Going down on the ingredients. Oh my gosh, okay? Next thing I'm adding here is some ground chicken, okay? I, I broke a chicken in a, a, a show some time ago. I froze that, saved it up for this consummate class. So what I did, I didn't run this in a RoboCur or anything. I just threw it on my cutting board and I cut it up, right? Uh, uh, you don't need to go through a grinder or have a special tool. I just use my kitchen knife for that, okay? So I've got some chicken meat there and that's white chicken. Thigh will work. Just any old chicken will work. But what you don't want is a super fatty chicken, right? Because at the end of this, this clarification, fortification process that we're working on here, we don't want a bunch of fat floating on top. We want crystal clear and beautiful, right? And so uh, uh, fat-free chicken meat is uh, in that bowl, okay? A few other ingredients. Garlic. I got some garlic, buddy. I'm just going to smash those guys. I had some of those teeny weeny little little garlic pieces in the in the bulb, right? I hate working with those things. So normally what I'll do is just smash them and throw them in stocks and things. So those are going to go along for the ride today just to use them up, get them out of my kitchen, those little puny things. And then finally, kind of the last secret ingredient in here that's really going to help me with the clarification is an egg white or two, okay? And what I have here, I got about four egg whites in there. And usually I, I have a general ratio where I'm doing, I'm trying to move the camera, so I'll move my head so I don't have it uh, in front, have that light glare, right? But I usually have uh, approximately one egg white for every pint of liquid that I'm gonna run. And I'm gonna do a couple of quarts of liquid. So that means four egg whites tonight. And you're not gonna see me measure anything. You're gonna see me yeah, just throwing stuff in the pot, right? But I'm basing it on about four egg whites here, okay? All right, finally, I wanna say, you know, I've got a lot of little bits and bobs and snips and snaps. A lot of veggies will work for you. You know, I, I could throw in some parsnips and, and root, a lot of root vegetables would work for me. But, um, it, you know, people will often ask me, oh, what are some good vegetables to use in a stock? It's almost easier to say what I don't want to use in a stock, right? So things like uh, lemon peel and things like that, super bitter, right? That's not going to work. I also don't use carrot peel when I'm doing stocks either. If you ever take a piece of carrot peel and just eat that, it's super bitter. I, and and, and it's also dirty, right? And so I don't want to work carrot peels into my stocks, and I especially don't want to work that into my consomme, okay? Another thing, I got a potato here. What the heck do I got that for? Get rid of it. Potato, it's going to cook down. It's going to cloud up my, my liquid here. That's the last thing I want to throw in there. Any starchy vegetables, they just aren't going to work for making stocks, things like that. Other things like zucchini, it's just going to cook down to mush and cloud up my stock. Uh, just those are the things I don't want in there, but so many vegetables vegetables can lend a nice flavor to what I'm doing. And, and so those are the vegetables I'm going to be using. Okay. So the goal here, let me get rid of the potato, right? But the goal here is to get this on the fire so I can really talk about the process once it starts going. Boom. Okay. But before I do that, let me welcome everybody. Looks like I got some friendly faces out there. Thanks for joining me, guys. I'm going to have a little sip of uh, whatever concoctions in this cup. I'm not talking about it. And then we're going to get into it. Oh my gosh, R.J. Harvey, the king of potatoes is out there. Sorry, I was just dissing your potatoes there, mister. Um, Laura Pauly, a guest from a few weeks back. Thanks so much for coming along for the ride. I got Jim Turknet, the hardest working man in the kitchen out there. Okay, beautiful stuff. Good, good to see you guys. Nice. Okay, so we're going to assemble this consomme, okay? Oh, that light is bugging me, okay? We're assembling the consomme. So what I want to do is put all of these ingredients together. Now, when I went to culinary school years and years ago, you know, they they taught us to just kind of cut up our vegetables into little chunks, you know, a little quarter inch dice. And the reason they did that is they wanted us to practice, you know, knife cuts, right? But when I'm making this consomme, I want things to kind of, I want pieces of vegetables to float. That's the first thing. I want lots of surface area so those vegetables can, can gift their, their delicious essences to the liquid that I'm putting together here. Okay, so I want 
small, lots of surface area. Um, but also one of the things that's going to happen here is these vegetables are going to kind of come together as this cooks, which we're going to talk about shortly. I don't want to get too deep into it right now, but they're going to come together. And one of the things I like to do is cut my vegetables in a, a julienne type cut. Okay. And when I do that, it kind of almost creates a little basket weave. Okay. We're, we're building a raft here basically. And, and wraps are built out of sticks not rocks, okay? So I don't want chunks of vegetables here. I want small enough to float and I want things to kind of mesh together, okay? So what you're gonna see me do here is I'm gonna just start knocking out my vegetables. <clears throat> Excuse me, that sounded weird. I'm gonna start knocking out my vegetables here and uh, I want them kind of long julienne, but the thing is, is this doesn't need to be pretty. I want it fast, okay? I don't need it pretty, I want it fast. So I'm just going straight across an onion here and you guys didn't need to see me peel that onion ah, and i'm getting it pretty thin okay those are little tiny pieces that can float in the liquid that's what i'm looking for i got a few of them just kind of flew over here so my onions out of the way and what i'm going to do is i'm going to just start building this in my pot some chefs will throw this into a bowl okay i'm just going to build it right in my pot because why get a bowl dirty and all of this is going to go into a pot anyway so it's going straight into a pot i teach practical cooking so there go my onions julienne okay next Ooh. i'm going to do a little more onion i think just because i have it and because onion is delicious okay Oh, yeah, lots of people out there. Boop, boop, boop. Thanks for coming, guys. Keeps me off the streets. Keeps me out of the ukulele band. Oh, yeah. All right, so the next thing I'm going to throw on in is some celery. Let's look at that celery. Got an extra piece of onion. I'll just kick to the side there. I got enough of that. So celery, again, I don't have to have a perfect julienne. I just want it fast, okay? So I'm just flowing through there and that's going to float just fine. And also, as I said, lots of surface area to give me maximum flavor extraction. That's what we're doing. We're going to be extracting flavors from these vegetables. Here we go. You can see I have a very tiny claw hand here as I do this. And I do lots and lots of videos. If you guys want to see more video on knife work, Look up Blades of Glory. Yes, I know I stole that name from a famous, famous epic motion picture, Oscar winner, best picture of the year. And there's my Julianne, okay? But check out uh, uh, my YouTube channel. I got Blades of Glory on there. And that's where I kind of go over a lot of knife cuts, okay? Finally, I'm going to throw down a little carrot for my mirepoix. Oh, there's another celery. Let me get that. And again, I'm just whipping through this really fast. I want to get this on the fire. So we can really talk, let me get that celery out of there. We can really talk about this consomme method while it's coming up. Oh, I hate that. My OCD, ah, oh, my OCD is screaming. So what I'm doing right now is kind of flattening my vegetables, cutting them in one direction. Now I'm cutting them into a second direction to give me a julienne. I'm, you're gonna see that again. Again, these aren't perfect juliennes, people. They're not pretty. I just want them fast. Something I would tell my students for years and years. Doesn't need to be pretty. It needs to be fast. Okay? So, as I said, totally not pretty at all. But lots of surface area exposed to the liquid and small enough to float. Those are the main things. Well, my voice is acting funny tonight. It's cracking like Peter Brady, if you get the reference. Here, a little stubby carrot here. Rolling on through. Anybody else there? If anybody has any questions, comments, thoughts, or feelings, hey, tell me I'm doing it wrong. Just try it. See how that goes for you. Huh. Chef, it's got to be a perfect Julian. I'm just going to do one more carrot. That's all I need. A little chunky there, lay them flat, and then go across them again to give me a julienne-like cut. So right now I've got onion, probably about half onion in there. Half of it, half of the mass is onion. And one quarter carrot, one quarter celery. Cut into tiny little sticks. Matchsticks, or 
The French, the real French term for a matchstick cut is allumette. Allumette. Okay. Lots of people. Hey, James made it in. Moment of clarity. Beautiful. Okay. Carrot. I always nibble carrots in the kitchen. I love them. Okay, that's enough of that. So I got a bunch of veggies in there, mirepoix, 50% carrot, 25 each of uh, celery and I said 50% onion, I should say. 50% onion, 25 each of carrot and celery. And you can kind of see it all in there. It's beautiful. You don't want to see me snacking. Next thing I'm going to do is take a little sip here. Thanks for staying with me, guys. This is horrible. Mm. Next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to drop in some aromatics, okay? So we talked about bay leaves. I got two of them in there, okay? Now, oftentimes you'll see chefs creating a little sachet pouch out of uh, 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 cheesecloth, something along those lines, right? But the thing is, this whole thing's going to get strained out. So I don't need to make a fancy little stock. It's just a fancy little sack. It's just going to go into the pot. So there she goes, right? There goes my bay leaves. Next thing, some thyme sprigs, okay? Now, these guys are a little bit long, and they're kind of attached at the bottom. I want to just cut them in half, just so it's easier to blend things. Cut them in thirds, maybe. Just kind of help me stir things up later, because things are going to get stirred. And I'm going to do the same thing with these stems. There's a lot of flavor in herb stems, guys. Do not discount an herb stem. Good stuff. Notice nothing is pretty here and it's gonna get even uglier. Trust me. Another thing I used to tell my students is, hey, the ugliest one wins. Sometimes I'm looking for ugly. Doesn't need to be party. All right, so there goes that. And notice that I'm cleaning my board in between everything. Oh, Brandy Baum is out there. Good to see you, young lady. So my aromatics are in there. I've got, whoa. I've got some stems in there. I've got my thyme in there, some bay leaf on my, it's all on top of my marifoie in there. You can kind of see that. A few other aromatics that are going in the mix here. Boom. All right. I'm going to throw in a few peppercorns, maybe about eight of them. Don't count your peppercorns. Just get about eight or 10 or whatever. Get them in the ballpark and in they go. Boom. There they go. They're in there. Trust me. And then finally, I got a little bit of garlic here and I probably don't need all of that. And all I'm going to do with this, I'm not going to peel it or anything. It's these little wimpy things. If I'm throwing garlic in a stock, you know, like I said, I'm using these little wimpy, tiny little, little um, cloves. I'm usually just smashing it and throwing it on in there. Okay. And again, all of that peel is just going to be strained out in the end. Okay. So it doesn't need to be pretty here. Garlic is very sticky. So I'm going to rinse off my blade. See all that stuff stuck to it. All right, Nikwana. And away we go. I'm going to give it a quick little wipe down. Little paper towel here. Come here, you. Oh my gosh, things are sticky. They're not moving. There's still just a little piece of skin on my board that's going to drive me crazy. OCD kicking in yet again. Next thing is that ground chicken I was showing you earlier, okay? Again, you don't, I, I just ground it, ground it, quote unquote, with my knife, okay? And that's going in the pot along with everything else. Remember I told you things are not gonna be looking pretty. Ugh, it's not pretty in there. Okay, so you can see in the pot, I've got chicken in there. I've got julienne mirepoix or allumette, if you will. I've got some aromatics, herb stems, thyme, bay leaf, peppercorn, we're reinforcing here, okay? Next thing I'm gonna add are the aforementioned egg whites, okay? So the egg whites go in just like so. That wasn't very fancy, okay? Pretty easy. I'm gonna kick all of that to the curb. And next, what I wanna do is I want to stir this vigorously, okay? So I'm gonna bust out my 
favorite little wooden spoon. This guy's sturdy. It's not a wimpy one that's going to snap as I'm I'm wh uh, whipping up all of these heavy ingredients. And I shouldn't say whip. The better term would be paddling these ingredients, okay? It's as if you had a paddle attachment on a mixer, and I'm just going to work the proteins with that chicken, with that egg white, until they start becoming a little bit foamy. That's what I'm looking for. Remember I said this is going to get uglier and uglier before it gets pretty, okay? That's what we're looking at now, okay? So into the pot we go. Let me get a little closer. There is no fire under this pot. Everything, by the way, is worth mentioning. Everything is ice cold. I'm going to get in there and I'm going to beat it fairly vigorously. I just cleaned this stove top, so I'm hoping this doesn't go flying all over the place. And I don't know if you can tell, but from where I'm standing, that egg white is already getting a tiny bit foamy, and that's what I'm looking for. You want it to be really ugly at this stage. That does not look pretty, okay? And that's the goal. Oh, yeah. Look at it go. Round and round she goes. Where she stops, nobody knows, okay? Now, the idea here is I want every little grain of chicken coated with egg. I want every piece of vegetable coated with egg. And the next thing I'm going to do is add some broth to it. And once I add that broth, or that stock, I should say, that egg white, and I start cooking it, that egg white's going to kind of coagulate, and everything's going to stick to each other, creating a mass that we call a raft, okay? By the way, this concoction right here that we're looking at is called the clear meat, the clear meat. It's as disgusting as it sounds, okay? And so I'm still kind of beating this. And I will say at this stage, chefs, some chefs insist upon taking the egg whites and whisking them up ahead of time. And I have been making consomme for years. I've just never found a reason or, or a need to do that. It works just fine, just like mixing it all together, I do it in the pot, one pot method here, and it all works just fine, okay? So you don't need to like whisk up your egg whites to a foam before you mix them in there. It's just, in my opinion, a waste of time. You're going to see a crystal clear soup at the end of this, a crystal clear broth, and uh, with no need for whisking egg whites, okay? Uh, by the way, this is not a guarantee. Hey, I've had things go wrong in the kitchen before, and this may be the first consomme that I that I destroy, okay? But it's not going to happen. It's Beautiful. Let's get another sip. Ah, uh, Lisa's joined us. Okay. Hope you guys are uh, hanging in there, coming along for the ride here. This is good stuff. I'm having fun. I hope you are too. Let's get a little sip. Mm, 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 mm. Right. So remember that stock. Okay. I was showing it to you before. I'm not going to use this. I'm going to pull another one out of my fridge. Big thing here, I want to emphasize again, everything was ice cold when I did this, okay? It came right out of the fridge, and I my stock is still in there too. So take a look at this. Oh, I pulled it out. I already pulled it out. So I'm going to go ahead and add stock. And here's the old Dave Nelson trick here. I don't know anybody that does this, but you've got this mass in there, and it's all glommed together. I add a small amount of liquid. You can see it's a little bit gelled there. And then I blend it and kind of thin it all out, right? Before I start adding a bunch more stock in there. If I just pour all of the stock that I need in there, um, you know, I'm gonna have this blob of clear meat in the bottom and it's not gonna break up. So I, I lightened that up a little bit and now I'm gonna add more. Boy, there's a bunch of nasty stuff on the bottom of that. Can you see that? Okay, that's all gonna clarify out. And I threw it in there, just, you know, there's flavor in that, right? So it's gonna be a beautiful thing. And so I'm going to mix that in there. And once I do that, it's lightened up even more. And I'm going to add some more. Okay. It's all gelled up. I probably won't use all of this. This is actually icy. Okay. I had frozen this stock. And so it's actually icy and slushy. And that is a beautiful thing. Again, you want everything ice cold in the beginning of this. And I'm just kind of emphasizing that point with my slushy, slushy stock. It's so beautiful. This wooden spoon is not going to go away. I'm going to hang on to that. We are going to need that during this process. So let me just set that aside. And without any further ado, I'm going to go ahead and kick a flame under there. 
And now that everything's on the fire, I feel like we can slow down and I want to really go over what you guys just saw in, in a step-by-step -step kind of fashion, okay? Um, a lot of times I'm a slave to the ingredients. I need to get things on the fire. <laughs> and then, you know, if, if, if I kind of talked about everything first, I get it on the fire and now we're just standing here waiting for it to come to a boil, right? And so I kind of held off on some, some consummate basics here. So let me, let me weave a tail for you and, and really talk about what's going on here, okay? I'm going to put a few things away. You guys kind of settle in and we're going to talk about what you just saw. It's so cool. All right. And so there it is. Now, before I do anything, what I want to emphasize is that when I turned on the fire, I turned it on kind of a uh, medium. Okay. So let's say five out of 10 on the old stove dial. Okay. And as this is working, I'm going to go in there and I'm going to, you're going to see me throughout this conversation. I'm going to go in there and I'm just going to gently scoot things from the bottom. What I don't want is all that egg white and chicken to cook to the bottom of this pot. So you're going to see me go in and just gently kind of turn that and make sure that nothing's sticking to the bottom. And uh, uh, that's what you'll see, okay? As this continues, you'll start to see clumps of egg white and chicken and vegetables and other aromatics start to coalesce in there. And once I start seeing chunky goodness happening in this pot, that's when I put the spoon down and I step away from the spoon, okay? No more stirring after that, okay? So as I talk, you're gonna just see me every once in a while, scoot things around in there. I am scraping the bottom and it's not really a scrape, it's just a move, okay? Just a move. Hey, I see a couple of my buddies from work there. Welcome, welcome. I'm gonna take another little sip and we're gonna get into the story of consomme, if you will, okay? so. What are we doing here? So you see I'm drinking coffee, you know, <laughs> coffee. All right. Yeah. If you believe that, I got a bridge to sell you. Now, uh, some of you have heard of cowboy coffee, right? You see the old chuck wagon back in the day, you know, and they're out on a cattle drive and you'd see Cookie, okay? The, the cook on the chuck wagon, his name was always Cookie, right? And what he would do is he would just take a plain old coffee pot they didn't have percolators back in the day. And so they take that coffee pot and they throw in some water and some coffee grounds, you know, and then they kind of you throw it on the fire and, and, you know, and then they have coffee, right? But there's a bunch of coffee grounds working around in there. So what Cookie would do on his chuck wagon is he would take an egg and mix it up in with the coffee grounds and the water and all of that stuff before it started cooking. Then he throws it onto the fire and the coffee grounds and the egg would all just kind of coalesce in the bottom. And then when the guys all came in to get their coffee before they went on on their cattle drive, right? Um, he'd be pouring them out crystal clear coffee. And that's exactly what's going on here. The proteins in the egg kind of picture fingers, right? And they're just reaching out into that liquid and grabbing every grain of coffee in there and then setting tight and holding onto that coffee. So all the liquid in there is crystal clear. And that's exactly what's going on with consomme. I'm gonna give it another little stir here. Again, unlike cowboy coffee, I don't want things sticking to the bottom of the pot, right? And things were ice cold when they went in here. So this will take a little time. So that's kind of what's going on. We're like making cowboy coffee here, only it's with delicious ingredients in a delicious, already pretty delicious stock, right? Now, it's called consomme. And what consomme means is completed, if you will. That's the idea here. And what I'm doing here is... I've added all these ingredients. It wasn't just egg whites. Like I could clarify this, make it crystal clear with egg whites, but egg whites will actually capture flavor and take it away, right? Um, what I'm doing is I'm adding other ingredients to it, like more vegetables. When I made that stock a few weeks back, I had vegetables in there and, and aromatics like you saw tonight, right? It was like thyme and parsley and uh, parsley stems. It was bay leaves, peppercorns, things like that, right? And all of this is back in the pot. So I had all of those flavors in the pot before or in my stock before, and now I'm enriching it with even more of that flavor. But wait, there's more, right? I also threw in some chicken as well. When I made this stock originally, it was all bones, if you'll recall, if any of you ever watched that. And if you didn't watch, uh, oh gosh, what did I, I call that one? Stocks, broths, 
something like that. I don't even remember what I what I called that show. I always come up with great names that I can't remember. So, um, <clears throat> but if you'll recall, I was using bones back then, and bones are fairly cheap compared to using meat. Tonight, I'm using meat to really add some kick in there, right? And so what you're getting here is a delicious stock that I made a few weeks back. And you're also getting a fortification of more vegetables in there. You're getting a fortification of more chicken meat in there. And all of this, as I'm talking, is coming together. You can see it's actually getting a little foamy on top, just tiny little clumps coming together. I'm starting to see it. And, and that's all in there uh, uh, delivering flavor into this entire concoction, right? It's, it's uh, 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 we're extracting flavors from all of those ingredients, okay? So as this comes together, you're gonna see all of these proteins, the egg, the chicken, they're all gonna start coalescing. They're gonna start coagulating and they're gonna capture every grain of impurity within this pot and it's going to come out crystal clear. Now this usually takes uh, you know however long it does to hit the boil but once you hit that boil if you can see down underneath this big clump of stuff I called it a clear meat earlier if you could see down below it once this coalesces and coagulates forms one thing um, you're going to see a perfectly clear liquid underneath there okay and that stock is going to keep simmering with all of this chicken and vegetable in there and it's just going to keep enriching it and fortifying it with more flavor and more nutrients and it's just going to get better and better and better um, what i don't want to do is boil this i want to i want to just hit the boil and then it's just going to be turned down to a simmer and we're just going to be riding along just letting it simmer and get more and more flavor out of all those ingredients and there's a word for that big clump of protein and and aromatics and vegetables once it all comes together and that word is raft and i said it earlier um that's one of the reasons i i cut my vegetables into a julienne earlier is because I don't want chunks, right? I, I don't build a raft out of rocks. I build it with sticks, okay? And so that's why you saw me do kind of a julienne earlier. Again, I'm just kind of babysitting this and keeping things, those proteins from settling down and sticking to the bottom. They can actually burn under there. They can scorch. You can scorch when liquid is present. It's just terrible. And so that as they say, is the story of consomme. Once this comes together, I'm probably gonna do an abbreviated simmer time here because you don't wanna sit here for 20 minutes watching this, but usually it's about 20 to 40 minutes of a low simmer, letting flavors blend, letting flavors extract from the new ingredients that we've added into the stock. And that is going to you know, yield perfectly clear, really, really flavorful consomme, uh, and then you're done, okay? When we are finally finished with this, um, we are going to go ahead and strain that out, and uh, you're going to see something beautiful, and there's definitely a technique for straining this properly, and I'm going to show you a few little tricks here in a minute for that, okay? But for now, we're just waiting for that ice cold, remember it was icy slushy liquid earlier, we're still waiting for that ice cold liquid to come to a boil. Some of you guys are ex-students of mine. I'm hoping this stuff looks familiar. Oh man, Kurt's out there. Beautiful, there's another old student of mine. James, definitely, right? And uh, Brandy as well, that was here a little while ago. Not sure if she's stuck with it, but uh, you know, hey, hey, we had fun in class, I hope guys. And I, I always hope you learn a little something, right? Hope you have uh, nightmares about this still, if I may. Okay, so I'm starting to see proteins really starting to coagulate. And if you can see in there, I mean, it's super, super cloudy, okay? There is nothing clear about this liquid at all, but things are going to change. It's going to be beautiful. So now we're just kind of, I'll be honest, we're killing time until I hit a nice boil here. And I just said, hey, hey, Brandy's still out there. I just said boil. And yeah, I'm going to hit a boil with this thing, but as soon as it hits a boil, if you let it keep rolling in a boil, this, this the raft that we talked about, it's going to bust apart into a million pieces and just make everything cloudy again. And so as soon as it hits a boil, I'm boom, right down to a simmer. I really want to kind of pay attention to this, but 
ultimately you guys saw me throw this together it wasn't hard right what was it about you know eight or nine ingredients but but the basic ingredients i mean the miracois carrot celery onion that almost counts as one ingredient if i say the word aromatics you know if you've you know seen any kind of food shows before you know they talk about those same aromatics when we're looking at like french flavor profiles that bay leaf peppercorn thyme garlic parsley stem you know it's like five things if i say aromatics that's almost one ingredient in my mind right and so it really is very very straightforward stuff i'm gonna maybe stir it once maybe twice more i don't want to stir it too much yeah it's definitely getting junky in there and once this all coalesces into one thing, hey, we got us some consomme underneath there. Really should have some, some simmer time though. Oh yeah. So I'm watching the question hotline out there. I'm not seeing any questions, just lots of love. And thanks for that guys. But if anybody does have questions, thoughts, feelings, you know, you want to add to the conversation, please shout it out and we'll try and get to them here in the busy, busy Indy Cook Studio. Okay. <laughs> All right. <clears throat> I really am coming up pretty fast here. Just touching things. Got hot hands, even after all these years of being semi retired. And, you know, I'm starting to see, I, I doubt if you guys can see it, but I'm starting to see as this coalesces, I'm starting to see the liquid below is just a tiny bit more clear. Oh, this is going to work, guys. This is not a guarantee, <laughs> but it's probably going to work. I don't think, uh, I don't think I've ever ruined a consomme before. You know, even, even when I was a, a flunky student back in the day, you know, I, I, I was nailing this consomme because ultimately it's a pretty cool concept that, that is not hard to do. Right. Um, I'm not a big food science guy or anything, but this is something that even I can handle. And so I'm starting to see around the edges, just a little more clarity there. I'm getting nervous because I'm not really stirring anymore, but I think I was on a little higher than five out of 10, quite honestly. Trying to kind of rush things a little bit. Bad chef, bad, very bad. All right, so we're getting so close. I want this to hit a solid raft. I want to talk about a couple more things. and. You know, we'll call it a night. We'll start um, uh, straining it out and, and just do a shorty here, but you'll see all of the steps that need to happen. Um, at this point, because I'm not stirring, you're taking a chance that things are kind of sticking to the bottom perhaps, but I was pretty good about stirring as I went. Boom, kicking my stove. And, oh gosh, now a new development. Look at that. You're starting to see a little bit of foam and solid raft along this one edge here. Um, here's something interesting as the raft kind of, uh, as the raft solidifies, comes together, coalesces, whatever word you want to do, uh, several chefs, many chefs out there uh, recommend poking a hole in the raft. So, so liquid can kind of vent to the surface, but I will tell you from experience that the liquid will find a way liquids are like that, right? You know, so it doesn't, you don't really need to poke a hole in this. You're just going to break little pieces of egg white and chicken and all of that stuff off into your liquid. And so I tend to leave things alone and I, I let the liquid find its own path, right? You don't need to poke any holes. You can see that foam and that other quote unquote, right? starting to coalesce around this edge here. Okay, that's where the real heat is. I'm moving things, I'm trying to be very gentle. The more I shake this around, hey, the more little particles, particulate matter will bust off and find its way into my finished liquid. But I can see liquid on the surface here. I'm touching it, you know, it looks fairly clear, much less muddy than it was earlier. That liquid just looked like chalky, glacial runoff, if you're familiar with that, right? Oh, I just touched that liquid. My fingers are sticky from the gelatinous concoction I have going here. And that's always a good thing, right? Gelatin is your friend in the kitchen. It comes from those meats, the connective tissues in the meats. Starting to boil right along this edge here. Let me get back in there, okay? Right along this edge here. And I can see that liquid is looking much, much clearer, okay? There's still a lot of this pot that hasn't really boiled. 
but it's starting to really break through right there. You're seeing that. I'm going to give it another turn. So it kind of simmers along another edge here. Okay. I want this to hit a full boil. And as it's doing it, foam is kind of forming here and working its way over the top of this. It's coming together, folks. I think we are going to have a functioning consomme. You can see this edge right here is kind of foaming. I haven't hit this full boil yet. I'm hitting a decent, a decent simmer though along the edges. Oh man, and I can see it right there. You guys can see it, right? That little opening right there, that liquid is crystal clear. Let me get my finger in there. Ugh. Right there, I'm trying to point at it, right? That is consomme, baby. Oh my gosh. And now there it goes. It's starting to boil over. Liquid's going over the top and it's going to start extracting flavor on the surface. I'm going to turn this down and I want to talk about like one or two little things, but I think we just kind of hit a boil. Whoop, whoop. That's about as much boil as I want on that. Let me see all of that. It still hasn't really done much over on this side, and now it's starting to, okay? <laughs> okay. Oh, oh, gosh. I think I'm more excited than you guys, okay? This is like beautiful stuff to me when the consomme comes together. That raft forms. You can see the raft. You're not supposed to poke this, but you can see a solidified raft there all in one piece. And you can see kind of why they call it a raft. It's, it's going way too high. I want that to be a simmer, okay? What we're looking for here, bloop, 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 okay? No more than that. It's just going too crazy right now. And the, the heavier that it boils, the more it's breaking your raft apart and re-clouding your liquid. And we just went through all that work to keep that from clouding, okay? And so, kind of turning it down, trying to get a nice temperature there. It's still really kind of foaming along one edge. I'm going to center that flame a little better. You can see I'm being very gentle when I move that pot around. <laughs> and it is flowing, okay? Now, earlier, I talked about simmer time for this, okay? Usually about 20 to 40 minutes simmer time. What the simmer time is about now is extracting those flavors out of all that expensive chicken you threw into here that's that's adding more flavor and fortifying. Oh gosh, that is that is just going. I don't think I can get low enough on this fire to get a proper boil. So what I'm going to do is turn it onto a smaller burner. All the way low. This big burner up front is too much. And so I just got it on a much lower flame. That raft is like floating on top, right? You can see that half, most of that raft is not even in the liquid, okay? So simmer time is about extracting more flavor. And one of the things that we might want to do at this point while it's going through simmer time, and we're doing a simulated simmer time here, we're going to say that it's 30 minutes tops, but that liquid's already clarified. What I'm going to do is I'm going to grab a ladle here, and I talked about ladle work in the broth show, okay? I always grab my ladle, I choke way up on it, find that balance point, right? And what I want to do is go straight down in here without breaking that raft, and I'm going to ladle some of that crystal clear stock. Now, you can see some chud floating on top of there, but that stock is crystal clear. You can see the bottom of that ladle now, and I don't know if you recall, I'll show you the stock in a minute. But that stock was pretty muddy when I started. So what I'm doing is, I, this is called basting the raft. And what I'm doing is taking hot liquid and pouring it over the raft to kind of try and extract a little more flavor out of the chicken on top that's, that's floating above all of this heavenly goodness, okay? And so that's something I just showed it to you. It's not something I ever did very much of. I don't think it's very effective. And I think you're in danger of breaking your raft apart and reclouding your stock when you do that. So I'm gonna kind of hold off on that. I'm trying to get a better simmer on this, show you what a bloop bloop looks like. I'm gonna rinse that ladle off. And we're gonna bring it on home here in a minute. Once I kind of see a good boil, but I can see little openings along the edges here. Let me see if I can get an angle. You can see crystal clear consomme in that break right there, okay? And uh, I'm pretty happy with how things went, okay? 
good timing. Let me show you this, okay? If you guys remember, if you were around for the beginning, that's what I started with, okay? And you are gonna see crystal clear, okay? I always like to present this in a glass so you can really see what we're talking about. And we're gonna compare this with the finished consomme at the end. And you're gonna see an amazing transformation, okay? And not only is it gonna be crystal clear, again, consomme means completed, okay? It's gonna be fortified with flavor. So consomme, extra rich, extra delicious, it's gelatinous. You feel your lips sticking together when you're eating it. It, it is a thing of beauty, okay? And uh, that is what you are going to witness tonight, okay? So we are going to pretend that this went a long time, okay? And we're going to say that it's done. It is clarified at this point, but I would probably go another 10 minutes, 15 minutes minimum just to extract a little more flavor out of this guy, okay? But for now, I'm going to turn off that heat. And if I leave this alone, the wrap will sink, okay? The heat was kind of keeping that at the surface. Get a little sip here. Mr. Daniels out there, thanks for joining, sir. And next, I want to talk about proper straining of a consomme, okay? Uh, boy, a lot of glare up there. Sorry about that, guys. I'll bend down. So uh, when we strain this, Earlier, I was really cautioning you guys on not stirring this, you know, messing with it. I'm being really careful about moving things around um, because I don't want to break the raft up. I don't want to recloud this stock that we just work so hard to clarify, right? And so as I'm straining this, I'm going to be extra careful to, to not mess things up and not break things up. I'm, I'm going to go down very, very gently and let the liquid just kind of sip, uh, uh, slip over the edge of my ladle. And then I'm going to pour it very slowly through a fine chinois. Uh, if you guys know the term chinois, it just means Chinese in French. It's like a conical Chinese hat, okay? Um, and it's going through this fine chinois and it is also going through, here's the chef's secret, it's going through a coffee filter. Wah, wah, this is a really tiny coffee filter. I'm going to make it work though, okay? And what I'm going to do is just strain it right into a cool looking little pot there. And you're going to be able to see that crystal clear consomme as I do this, okay? Now, one thing that I left out when I put this together, and I'm, I'm going to go through the whole process again, okay, at the end here. But one thing I left out when I put together all of my eggs and my chicken and my vegetables and all that. Another thing I didn't mention is we like to season this in the beginning, okay? And the reason is salt is dusty, right? You know, there's schmutz in salt, right? And so if I season this in the beginning to the perfect seasoning, as this cooks, it's going to clarify anything that's in my salt out of it, okay? Now, if I if I season at the end, now there's danger that, you know, what if there's a piece of pepper in there or whatever? Now it's floating around in this perfect, pristine consomme. It's going to stand out like a sore thumb, right? And so we, we tend to want to season this before we start cooking, right? We season it when it's cold, but it's tough to taste it with raw chicken in there, raw eggs and everything like that. So it's kind of like, I like to throw a little seasoning in there and I completely forgot to throw my salt in there. And by the way, when I say seasoning, I'm usually talking salt, unless it's like, sweet, sugar, acid, things like that. Acid is a seasoning too, right? And so I get to this point, if I don't have enough seasoning in there, and I doubt if I do, I'm going to put my salt right into my little coffee filter here and let that liquid melt the salt as it goes through and season that way, okay? So that's what you're going to see right now. I'm going to make a little fold in my coffee filter. I'm going to put it into my chinois. It's a very tiny coffee filter. In fact, it's a comically small coffee filter, but that's going to work. Okay, you see it on in there. Okay, and what I'm going to do next, I think I'll move. I mean, let me let me do a little scene change here. What's the biggest batch of consomme I've made? I've done consomme in uh, steam kettles in hotels, like 20, 30 gallon uh, uh, steam kettles. You know, big batches of it for like VIP party of 500 or whatever. I didn't, you know, I didn't measure the gallons or anything like that, but, you know, big giant batches and it always works, you know, and, and there's really nothing, you know, once you can do, if you can do a small pot, you can certainly do a big pot. So I'm throwing in a goodly amount. In fact, I'm even going to add a little more of that. And I'm putting that right into my coffee filter. 
so that consomme will melt it as it goes through that hot broth I'm trying to get a good angle for you folks all right oh come on boop there oh my gosh everything's backwards when you're doing this got to get used to that so next i'm going to bring my consomme over throw down a little kitchen towel america's favorite get a long view of this maybe and i'm going to put the consomme right next to it okay so it's looking like this Boom, very gentle. You can see the raft is starting to sink and you can really see that clear liquid, okay? This is so cool. I love it, guys. This came out great. For beef consomme, what, could, what cut of beef would you use? I would use, okay, here's one for you, okay? I got, if Daniel's still out there, uh, uh, my butcher, I would use the devil's tongue, okay? It's the toughest piece of shank off of a cow you can possibly get but it's going to be super flavorful right you know <laughs> you don't see a lot of devil's tongue out of there out there or anything but it is the toughest cut i think there is uh maybe outside of the heart you know or something like that uh, uh but you know a tough flavorful cut is what you want i wouldn't do like beef tenderloin in this or anything like that something with connective tissue chuck uh, something along those lines, uh, shank meat, something with with real punch to it because it's about flavor extraction, right? That's what the, the whole role of the meat in there is flavor extraction. So we'll go over the whole process again uh, as a review once we're done. Uh, uh, but uh, great question. Excellent. Okay. And you're talking beef consomme. Yeah. Excellent. Okay. So I've got my salt in the cone. Okay. And I've got my consomme over here and this is a little tricky let me do this oh dear oh dear hmm. well that's never happened before <laughs> we're just gonna go for it guys i don't have time to wash things so we're going for it and i'm gonna throw some more salt in there because i just got salt all over the floor I think I'll need some more salt before this is over. And so what I want to show you is I'm taking my ladle and I'm just gently going down. And I like to go from one side and just let the liquid flow over the side of the ladle. It's going to get a little steamy here. And you can see the bottom of that ladle. Look how clear that is. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to pour it on into that little cone there and let it flow on through. Now, usually I try to pour it onto one edge. If I had a bigger coffee filter, you know, out in the business, we use those jumbo coffee filters. You guys get the idea. And I might just ditch my coffee filter before this is over. But you guys kind of see how that works. And I go in again. What I'm not doing is I'm not stirring here. I'm not bouncing things around. I'm doing camera work. I'm doing ladle work. And you can see little bits of stuff in there, but my chinois and my coffee filter are catching that. We have a successful functioning coffee, I'm sorry, consomme over here. So I'm just going to kind of try and get a good, there we go. You can see both containers. And I'm just going to start doing my thing here. Uh, you really need to just ladle this out. If you try and just pour this consomme in there, hey, something's going to take a header and you're going to be in trouble. And there it is. And it's flowing on through. Okay, five second rule. <laughs> Thank you, James. Thank you for understanding. Awesome. And I think what I'm doing is I have such a small little coffee filter. I'll be honest, guys. My, my coffee filter is overflowing. It overfloweth, okay? You can kind of see that. But my chinois is capturing a lot of this as well, okay? And it's not doing much anymore. So let me just kind of pretend like we're doing it. You guys get the idea here. And I'm just going to flow on into my chinois and let that do the work. The coffee filter really is a great trick, okay? And, you know, back in the day, before they had those paper coffee filters, I imagine French chefs would actually just destroy like a linen napkin out of the dining room or something to put their consomme through to get it just ultimately clear. And you guys get the idea, okay? I could switch to a bigger ladle. Another little trick here is you can kind of tilt your chinois 
pour the liquid down the edge so it acts as like a like a gold sluice and it catches particles on the way down. I've given up on the coffee filter just for the sake of time. Uh, by the way, it smells delicious. It smells really good. It's not just like a stock. This is this is soup ready to eat. We will have to uh, double check the seasoning on this, but other than that, there's only really one other thing that I would recommend, and you guys get the idea for this. Oops, I had a little drop go in there. You guys get the idea for the straining portion of the program, I think. So I think I'll put this aside. You got the idea. And I'll just salvage that later. And the last thing I might do my students always hated this. I'm just going to set that in there. Here's my crystal clear consomme, by the way. Now, I'm going to give this a little taste, okay? If I may, I'm going to do this two-spoon rule, okay? One for dipping, and then I take the other and taste out of that. That's a thing that we do, okay? So let me get a little consomme out of there. Oh, boy, I can't get down on that... that that uh, pot very well. Oh my gosh, that seasoning is outstanding. I just did the right amount. I'm gonna pretend like, oh gosh, it wasn't enough. Let's just adjust that, right? And pew, 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 okay? I just pretended to add a little more seasoning and that's what you would do if the seasoning wasn't perfect, but it is just spot on the money. I'm gonna leave that alone. The last step for this, and then we'll go over, go over a review, is to defat this. Now, if you look at this, you can see fat glimmering on the surface of that. And the trick for that, to get rid of that, is the old paper towel trick, okay? So many chefs know this one. And so what we're gonna do is I'm just gonna get a little dish next to it. Got a little dish. And I'm gonna get a paper towel. And I kind of shake off the uh, lint or flick it off. I do the old flicking trick. And then I just drop it on the surface and drag. And that is going to pick up any fat that's on the surface. And if you look in there, it's already looking well, a little better. I'm going to keep on going. And when I was in culinary school, that was one of the things I used to test my students on, right? Oh, you've got to drop a fat on your consomme. And I would have them do the little paper towel trick to pull that off again. You guys see how I'm just dragging that through, okay? You're losing a little consomme here, but consomme needs to be completely crystal clear, not a drop of fat, perfectly seasoned, no particles floating around in there. It's a thing of beauty, okay? So you guys get the idea of the old paper towel trick. Get rid of that. And we're going to say, yeah, it's pretty, pretty well. Oh, yeah, much less fat on the surface of that. Beautiful. It's hard to get every little drop. But look at that. And the last thing I want to do before I review is, let's see, I had a big, big ladle somewhere, didn't I? Thought I grabbed a bigger ladle. Well, I'll just do this. Grabbing another glass. And we're gonna fill this slowly but surely. And ladies and gentlemen, it's the old consomme comparison. This is where we started and this is where we ended. And you can see light and shadow through there. It's beautifully done. And that is an outstanding consomme. And it's got a taste that can't be beat. Cheers. Mm. Mm. I can feel it on my tongue, right? Gelatin, that 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 extra fortification of, of meat and, and uh, uh, collagen that is cooked down into gelatin in there. It, it, it's a feel, right? You, you, I often do this, you know, I used to do this in front of students, like feel that stuff. You can feel the stickiness, right? It's like, that's where, you know, you're really cooking, right? And if you, if you get a fine sauce in a fine restaurant or something like that, that's one of those things, right? You, you put it in your mouth and your lips are sticky, right? And it's just like part of that experience. It's like, yeah, this is the, 
I'm going to say it. This is the shit, man. You know, I, I always think that when I, when I get one of those really, really gelatinous sauces and I can feel that gelatin in there. Again, it's collagen. Cooks down about 165 and converts to gelatin. And that's what that is. It, it's, it's, it's been extracted out of that meat and it's in my, in my broth now. Okay. Just outstanding. Right. Oh, thanks, Laura. Thanks. Um, so what you saw tonight, just a quick nutshell. I'm going to get down here a little bit. That glare is bad. So we started out all ingredients, ice, ice cold. Okay. Um, I chopped up some mirepoix, right? I, I did about, you know, probably uh, uh, eight ounces of mirepoix for a two, cut, a two quart batch here. Okay. I chopped up some chicken meat into basically ground chicken. I did uh, about a half pound for my two quart batch here. So about a pound for a gallon, okay, is a good general rule there. Um, I threw in aromatics, your bay leaf, peppercorn, garlic, um, herb stems, and thyme, okay? And herb stems, I'm usually talking parsley, okay? We don't use the leaves. It would have turned the whole thing green, okay? Um, other things, I added egg whites, okay? I did one white per pint okay you could go more but the more egg whites it would be even clearer right but the more egg whites you use the more flavor that's going to be pulled out and captured by those egg whites and you're going to lose flavor that way right so you want to be judicious in your egg white usage okay um let's see i uh put all of those ingredients into a pot or a bowl and i beat them vigorously with my old buddy the wooden spoon okay Ugh, looks terrible right now okay but what i want is like foamy snot looking just horrible looking mess in that pot and this is a, a a concoction that we call the clear meat okay uh it is it is meat that is going to clarify that's the idea right once i've got all that together it's whipped up it's looking foamy um i add ice cold stock to it I put that stock in a little at a time in my case here, and I got to keep bending over uh, uh, a little at a time that that lightens up the clear meat so it can receive more stock. It's not just a lump of, of meat floating around in a bunch of liquid. OK, at this point, this is the thing I missed tonight. Throw a little seasoning in there, right? The, the more you can perfectly season this in the beginning, the better it's going to be later on, because if you add seasoning at the end, you're going to add impurities along with it. Okay. So season before you clarify, and then you go onto a fire, turn it on to a moderate, medium, whatever heat you want to call that. Okay. But I called it five out of 10. Okay. Bring that up slowly. As you bring it up, your nasty looking wooden spoon here. Okay. Get in there make sure you're, you're not really stirring this around in a vortex or anything. You're just keeping things off the bottom. That's all you're doing, right? Keep things off the bottom. Once things start to coalesce, set the spoon down and step away from the spoon, okay? Let things come together. Get it all the way to a boil. And you saw I just boiled around the outer edge there and I turned my pot to make sure that it, it got a nice ring of, of foamy coagulated meat around the edge. And then I turned it down to a simmer. Bloop, 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 okay? Ideally, you're going to go 20 to 40 minutes on that to extract flavor out of the meat that you added, out of the vegetables that you had in there. And once you have done that, your consomme is done. OK, and then I put a uh, I had a conical strainer. I put a coffee filter in there and I very carefully ladled the liquid from the consomme from the pot into that strainer and let it flow through and uh, yield a perfectly beautiful stock. At the end there, before you serve this to a guest, double check that seasoning, make sure it's where you want it. And ladies and gentlemen, you're in business. If I chilled this, it's going to gel up like jello, okay? It's going to be beautiful. And, and actually over in Europe, people are still fond of eating aspic over there. And that's kind of what almost, this is almost what that is, okay? Aspic is even more gelatinous and it's crystal, crystal clear. And they would like chop this stuff up and present it on a plate next to a piece of pate. And you eat a piece of pate and then grab a little jewel of this gelled consomme or aspic and it just melts on your tongue. It's almost like a sauce for it, right? It's really, really old school. French cuisine right here. This is French soul food we're talking about here. But uh, ladies and gentlemen, that is consomme in a nutshell. Um, it's not something that people do every day, but it's pretty cool to watch 
things go from this. I picked a really, really cloudy stock. I did that on purpose into that. And it's just like, oh, whoop, you can kind of see, almost see me through there, right? Um, if you have a, uh, by the way, um, consomme mise en place, when you see a soup plate, you know, those. it's a bowl, but it's really shallow. That's for consomme. And when you serve this, it's usually with very simple garnish, maybe a little uh, a julienne vegetable, uh, a couple of noodles, right? A, a, a piece of omelet, a very thin piece of omelet or something, a few of those shaved off in there because we're not showing off garnish so much. We're showing off this beautiful execution of this consomme, right? So consomme served with very, very simple garnishes. And uh, it's just a thing. It's old school and, and it's cool. Um, and uh, I think that's all I got, right? So uh, what I'm going to do is uh, I'm going to drink my consomme for dinner, okay? And uh, I'm going to call it a night for you folks, okay? If you are appreciating what we're doing here, please tune in to the Andy Cooks community uh, whenever you have time. Uh, we're usually doing these on Thursday nights. I uh, have a special guest next week. It's going to be more of a private ceremony with a turkey at my house but um uh, uh for that thursday but uh moving forward i'm gonna probably do another interview uh in the one after that i'm still kind of uh in negotiation for for the special guest on that one and uh um you know there'll be more cooking lessons more interview more between stove uh, uh interviews so keep uh keep apprised of those and uh don't forget you can check out the archives <laughs> i just got a billion zillion videos over there of just uh, uh, this crazy old dude hanging out in his kitchen, messing with food. Okay. And so uh, get on over there and subscribe for yourself and subscribe to your mom and your kids and your wife and your dog. Okay. It'd be, it's all good. Um, outside of that, ladies and gentlemen, um, I think that's going to do it. I don't see any questions there? Liquid gold. I like that. <laughs> Flavor bomb. Yes. Um, so I'm going to leave it at that, folks. Uh, uh, and I'll just uh, say the party. It's always in the kitchen. Ladies and gentlemen, class is dismissed. Okay, see you next time. Bye-bye.